So today we're going to go over in this video how to install options, specifically the Ethernet IP option. Uh, so we'll do the Ethernet IP install or the option install and setup on our Fanuc uh, Doosan Mills. So from our distributor we get three files. This Fanuc option install, a text file, and a ladder. So the first step that you do is you install this ladder onto your mill. And as best I understand, and it could be a little wrong, what that really does is it gives your mill the, the typical robot option so that it sets up all the, the registries so that you can communicate with the PLC or a robot easily. Uh, this file here is actually the option file. So it just contains a, more or less a bunch of codes um, that is your option. And it's, I'm assuming it's all kind of coded and secretive, so it's specific to your serial number. And then this file here has uh, detailed information that talks about uh, your options. And the thing that you need to care about is that this serial number here matches your uh, matches this number here which is the name of this PDF but it also matches this number because the first step you're going to do is you're going to take this file make a copy of it and rename it CNC option set dot text so we'll go into this and it says hey you're going to receive this uh, file rename it what I just told you and then uh, ensure that the, the root, the file is in the root directory of the memory card. So we'll... One important note to make is that it's best to always have the option to show the file extensions for known file types. And the way that you find that is you go down to the search bar and you uh, type in ext and then there's this option here that automatically populates show file extensions. And then you can go here to the settings menu. And what you're looking for is hide extensions for known file types. You want that unchecked because what can happen is you can think that you're naming this file cncoffset.txt, but there's actually another .txt behind the, the text. So, oops. So it's named .txt twice. So I'm going to just erase that first text and we'll just call it that. Now we're going to put it into the mill and uh, change some settings. Alright, so I've got the memory card and you have to do this with the memory card. Um, and then we're going to hit the option key until this setting page shows up. If it doesn't show up, just keep hitting it. It'll eventually cycle over to it. Um, Going back to the instructions here. First thing you gotta do is enable parameter write, which is the first thing on this list. It needs to be a one. And in order to do that, you have to have the e-stop in or be in MDI mode. So either way, I usually just push the e-stop in. Next thing is the IO channel. So channel four is the memory card, which is here. Channel 17 is the USB. Don't ask me why they chose 4 and 17. So we're going to change that 17 to a 4. And we're ready for that. Again, you got to be in edit mode or emergency stop. I'm kind of in both right now. It doesn't really matter, one or the other. And then uh, the next thing you do is hit the system key. And this is where different uh, controls, because this one's a 31i, it'll have a little bit different nomenclature. So we don't have an operator key on this particular mill, but we have something called option input, which is kind of similar to what it's gonna ask for on the next page. It wants option read, ours is called option input. It doesn't really matter. So we're gonna hit that and then execute. Option setting succeeded, power must be off. So now I'm just going to cycle power. 
and that should be the option is now enabled. All right, now that we have the options installed, it's time to install the card. I'm not gonna do that in this video, but I'll show you how it's done. So the card right here, there's a fast ethernet card here and a fast ethernet card here. And uh, despite my best efforts and to my best knowledge, you have to have both cards in here for the ethernet IP to function. This card's doing nothing. It just, I don't know. I, I can't figure out how to get a single card to give Ethernet IP functionality. So you gotta buy a card, I, I'm gonna guess it's like three grand or something, it's probably not cheap. Anyway, put it in slot two. This this close one is slot two. It slides in just like a, like a video card on a computer, kinda. And then uh, plug your Ethernet cable into it. Uh, most of the time there's an Ethernet cable that runs into the, into the console behind the screen. Um, sometimes it's plugged in to here. So, there's uh, onboard Ethernet that gives you some functionality. Um, typically, people use this first card for a data server, and then this other card can be used for um, FLNet or Ethernet IP is what we use it for. Um, anyway, you got to use. You have to have both cards for some reason. I don't know why. There's little tabs here and there. You push those in after you take these screws out, if you can see that, it's not focusing very well, but there's a screw there and there, just a little Phillips guy, um, pretty easy. Uh, you take this whole thing out, it's got a little circuit board connection on that side, and uh, you plug your thing in, you put it all back in, you put those little screws in and tighten them up softly, and you're done. That's the card, and then there's uh, some setup you have to do. So the setup isn't that scary, but you definitely need some instructions. Uh, this video will, will be useful if you don't have this instruction manual. Um, so this is made by Doosan and it's sort of like a mix of, uh, uh, well actually it's right there. So this manual, which actually doesn't help you do the things that are listed in this manual, is apparently what they base this off of, which I have no idea how you get that because I've read the other manual trying to get one card to work and it didn't work. Anyway, so they tell you uh, uh, this is how you set it up and you're supposed to buy some uh, Phoenix contact switch, which isn't necessary. The important part is, is they tell you exactly which option you're supposed to get. So these are the options, R66, uh, or R966, and R973 and R967, which is the one I have. Um, we have two fast Ethernet boards. Um, somehow you can get this to function, which is just with one Ethernet board. I don't know how to do that. Um, anyway, this is the route we're taking on the adapter side, so the mill will be the adapter, and uh, that's the option that we have that we installed earlier. Um, going down the list, so uh, if you have two cards, the first one is the data server board and the second one is the Ethernet IP board, it's the same board, they're both fast Ethernet boards. Um, you have to fill in these parameters as shown, adapter is a 24. So the way you do that isn't hard. You're gonna hit the system key until you get to this parameter page and uh, I'm already in the neighborhood where we're supposed to be, but if you weren't, all you do is key in 970, which is the first parameter you're going to edit, and it will take you directly to there. So in 970, we place a three, we skip that stuff, and we pay, place a negative one in this field, and then a 24, oh man, sorry, a 24, I'm being a terrible cameraman, 24 in that field. So. 975 is negative one, 970 is three, and 976 is 24. Uh, there's not a lot more to that. And then the, the console tells you, hey, power must be off, which is a curse, curse, some sort of mix between Korean and, and uh, Japanese to tell you to restart the machine. I'm gonna do that. Lucky for you, I'm gonna hit pause while it boots. All right, the mill has rebooted, and now, it's telling me that power must be off. It initialized communication. This is a good thing. 
Your mill may act different uh, depending on which series it is. Again, this is a 31. Um, so they all kind of are a little strange in their own way. So I'm going to restart it again, hit the off button, and then I'll pause it. All right, we're booted up again. So now, go ahead and hit the system key. And uh, it's not giving us any alarms now. And I'm going to go hit the next page, next page, next page. Seeing the Ethernet option, which actually doesn't apply to the Ethernet IP, is a good thing that tells you that it found the cards well. And you're going to hit next, at least on this control, a bunch of times. The very last one is Ethernet IP. Now, you may have an issue where it doesn't show up. So the control tells you to hold down the plus soft key for a long time. It says press and hold. I don't know, five seconds. And then it'll pop up. On that mill over there, that's what happened. I had to hold down this button and then it popped up. This one, it, it just figured it out itself. I don't know why. Um, all right, so we're going to here. And this is uh, pretty straightforward. You're going to give it a, an IP address. This one is uh, 10.2.55.118. Oh, whoops. I fat fingered some stuff. 5.118. Okay. Enter. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Uh, and uh, router IP address is going to look an awful lot like that, 10.2.55.1. And then we go over to this ping page over here. And uh, this is where you'll test your connection back to the PLC. PLC is 10.2.50, whoops, 5.100. And then... Um, Com state and uh, task state are both kind of not active yet. Then you go to next page on this control, but basically you got to go find the other the other uh, setup pages. Ethernet IP uh, A set. I don't know what A set means, but this is uh, these are this is where it gets more to be uh, important. Um, this I leave just as it is. Uh, all of these are zero, that's zero, and the status address is zero. You could set that to be whatever you want, but we don't. Um, this is the most important part. This is where you address your um, your data, actually. So, digital input, type zero one. I don't know what the types are. I'm sorry, I'm not a super expert at this. I just get by with what I've got. Uh, in, in our cell, this is R3100, and uh, size is 16. So the size has to match what the PLC is giving the, the mill in its connection. So the PLC will have an Ethernet connection. In our case, it's an Allen Bradley, and it will have a size as well. Um, and, uh, and then you have to match, you have to know that in in the output of the PLC, the first unit or the first uh, signal is R3100.0, and then you just map everything on the PLC side to match. So you make this uh, 0, 01, and then you type in R3300, and then the size is 16. So it's uh, 16 words by 8 bits a piece. That's what that means. Um, I don't know what the DO tag means or these options. I don't know what any of that does. Now, here's the important part. You have to turn it on. Right now it's disabled. Go to state, you say enable, and now it's enabled. And the whole time, ever since we got into this, it said the power must be off. So basically to firm up all these changes, it is needing a restart. So anyway, all this uh, goes along like, that and I think, I think that's all. Uh, you can set up more allocations. So if for whatever reason you wanted to build another set of data that went somewhere else, you could. Although that would just honestly be pretty confusing. Uh, I usually like to build mine in one big chunk. 
so that way you're not trying to deal with two chunks. I've done that in another cell and it got really confusing. Um, all right, so now we're gonna restart. Lucky for you, we have a pause button. All right, the mill just woke up. Now, uh, we don't have any communication alarms, which is a great thing. Now, we're gonna go next page, next page, next page, like a bunch of times. It's the one after USB on this particular mill. And then we're gonna go to ping, and this is the important part. Hopefully, this mill can see the PLC. Boom, baby, look at that. We got received responses. How cool is that? So uh, now all that remains is to set up the, uh, the new ladder. So we already wrote the ladder on this mill. And we'll just paste the ladder into here and then it will be ready to communicate just like the other two mills. So um, again, always start with a backup and always end with a backup. That way you have a start and a stop and you can get back to where you were. Um, if for whatever reason in any of this process you end up sort of bricking the mill, you want a backup. I've done that before and it's not fun if you don't have a backup. Um, and that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So the next step, which we won't do on, on video, is to uh, build, check out the inputs and the outputs in the mill and make sure that the mill and the PLC are seeing them the same, make sure that everything's mapped properly. And then after that, you're, you're ready to go and you can have a good conversation with the PLC.